Just cooperate with me. <laughs> they ain't fucking with me. Augie, I, you know, huh? I know they are, and I, I understand that. Can you call your wife and have her come get you, bud? In this gripping episode, we reveal the moment an evil cop realizes his career is over. Witness the dramatic downfall and the end of his reign of corruption. On October 27th, 2018, in the dead of night, Officer Justin Augustine asked Lieutenant Rick Byron to meet him behind the old Board of Education office. There, he revealed that he had crashed his cruiser while trying to take a piss. What happens next at the police station is pretty wild. Yeah, Augie, come here. Let's go out here in the garage. Uh, we got to put your weapons away. Come out here, we'll talk. You'll be all right. Um, the, uh, the cars are just being taken to Lumpkins. What's going on in there? Huh? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? Uh, we got to put your weapons away. Yeah. You're not. Um, here, let me have a second, unload it. Just need to unload it. What am I doing? Byron wasted no time disarming Justin and securing everything. Uh, oh, sorry. When you total a vehicle, here, go in here. So we can put this way. When you total a vehicle, you gotta go down for a, a drug and alcohol assessment. And everybody that wrecks a cruiser that totals it uh, has to go down there. So what we do is just take your, taser off of you and uh you have any backup weapons on your or anything uh drop your vest or your uh duty belt because you don't need that we're going to go down to a drug call test down at the hospital you and i and uh you don't need all your gear so take your uh are you all right augie yeah you seem well, you, your focus seems divided on me what's going on you just nervous yeah okay You're, are you under the influence of anything augie no, good. I hope not. I, I do. Justin, nicknamed Augie, clearly can't focus or understand what's happening. Even though Byron doesn't want him to be under the influence, it's obvious that he is. What else do you got on you? you got done. pocket knife, huh? I'm done. What's going on, though? Tell me what's I'm going done. on, bud. I'm done. Trust what you're done. Do you you're going to go with me and take the test, Augie? You're refusing it? You don't want to do that. I'm done. Okay, so what does that mean? All right. Are you under the influence of something, Augie? What's wrong with you right now? I don't understand. I'm that. done. Okay. Are you going with me? No. So you're, what are you going to do? No. Can you call somebody to come get you? I don't need to. Well, I, I'm not going to let you drive. Yeah. Okay. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, what? What? I'm not going to let you drive. Can you call your wife? All right. Don't don't play this game with me, bud. I'm trying to be your, I'm you, trying to help you out here. You ain't doing right. Well, I can't do stuff. I'm just doing what I got to do, Augie. It's my job. If you want to leave, go ahead and leave. All right, let's go. Let's go. Come on, Augie. Don't do this, man. It ain't worth it. It ain't worth it. All right, I'm just doing my job. I'm just asking you to relax, okay? I'm done. Okay, and I understand that. I understand what you're saying, all right? I just don't want you to do it like this, all right? I'm not trying to be a prick. I'm not trying to be difficult. You got to understand, it's, it's my job, dude. All right? So don't treat me like that. Augie really wants Byron to forget everything and just let him go home in his drunken state. But Byron isn't going to let that happen, and it definitely ruins Augie's mood. Guess not all cops are bad. Augie, are you okay to drive, brother? Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, I'm worried about you. Yeah. All right, well, get going then. Do what you got to do, all right? All right. Augie, you need to, you need to get it. You need to relax. Please. No, I, huh? What'd you say? Who is? You just wrecked a cruiser. It's not the end of the world. I know it's not the end of the world. We can do this, Augie. If you just go down and take the test like we're asking you, if you do that, then we can at least get that cleared to where you can come back to work. Seriously, Augie, I'm trying to help you, bud. Huh? What'd you say? I don't want to... What'd you say? What do you mean you're f***ed up? Alcohol... What are you talking about? Augie can't hold it in anymore, and his emotions start to spill over as he throws blame onto poor Officer Byron, who is the only one still on his side. I get that, bud. So I can't let you drive home, all right? Yeah, I can't. No, you can't. Yeah, I can't. You said you're f***ed up. How are you going to drive home? I'm not f***ed up. I'm f***ed up. I'm f***ed up. What, I, I'm, help me understand, Justin. I'm f***ed 
Fuck. You talking about just in the head? Fuck you. Huh? We don't need to do this, Augie. What? Come on. We don't, what? Why are you doing this like, why are you doing me like that? Huh? What have I done to you for you to do that, do me like that, man? <laughs> Seriously. I am honest to God being serious with you. What have I done to you for you to treat me like what that? Huh? What the I don't know. I understand that, Augie, that you're upset. I get that. You're having a tough time right now with everything that's going on, bud. But it doesn't have to go out like this, okay? It's just an accident. Troy, 421. Okay? The what I do? Huh? The what do I do? What do you mean, what do you do? What do you do? If it's just an accident, what do I do? You hit, you hit a semi-trailer, so again, as part of our policy, we have to go down with that and go take the test. Augie thought Byron would let him off easy and skip the sobriety test. However, that wasn't possible because it's a policy that can't be ignored. You're about to get yourself arrested, bud. You're, I mean, for what? For, what, do you, what do you mean, what am I gonna do? I can't let you drive. So you try to get in that car, I gotta stop you. And then you're gonna start fighting with me. What is that going to do? Huh? Seriously, Augie, I'm what? doing this to me. I didn't do anything to you, okay? I didn't do anything to you. Well, let's go back in here so we can figure this out, Augie. Please. Augie is acting like a child and ignoring any advice, but what he doesn't realize is that refusing to take the test will only confirm his arrest. Augie, I, you know, huh? I know they are, and I, I understand that. Can you call your wife and have her come get you, bud? Get your phone out and call her. You don't have your phone? You want to use mine? What's this going to do? Huh? I didn't, What's this going to do? I don't know. That's why I got a calling, so. How much did you drink today, Augie? A lot. You know he's gonna want to do a test, right? <laughs> he straight up admits to drinking on body cam, not realizing how badly he's landing himself in even more trouble. When backup arrived, let me give Jason a call, bud. Yeah. Not go ahead. Yeah. Jason, this is Byron. Hey, uh, is there any chance you can come in so we can talk? Okay. Well, I don't know how much time we got as far as cooperation. He's not cooperating real well. He's right here in front of me. I'm not hiding or talking. I'm talking in front of him. Um, he's acknowledged that he was drinking today um, and whatnot. So um, that's where we're at now. How do you want us to proceed with that? Yes. He's refusing. He's refusing to be tested. So. Are you going? Are you going to go down for the test, Augie? He's refusing that. Okay. Right, bye. Thank you for being honest with me, Augie. You'll pay the bill eventually. What bill? Yeah. I don't know what that means, but yeah, you will. Don't do me like this, Justin. Yeah. I didn't do it. I'm not doing anything to you. Okay. I hate to see you like that, bud. I didn't I didn't do this, Hoggy. Why are you taking why are you taking it out on me? Yeah, it's on you. Huh? Yeah, it's on Okay. Alright. I'm just waiting for a phone call back. Just, relax, just relax, Bob. Just relax. All right. Enough. Relax. Just relax. Thirty-six of Buckpack, Ohio Temporary. George. I stand like this no matter where I'm at or what I'm doing. G eight three three one nine five. Just relax, Justin. Twenty fourteen. I don't know what level of cooperation we're going to get with that, but we'll do what we got to do. That's, that's not what I'm talking about. 
Uh, I'm going to guess that this is going to be a fight. All right. Bye. The officer made it clear he felt uneasy about his confrontation with Augie and could sense the tension. Not to mention, Augie passive-aggressively threatened the officer. Augie, he's saying I got to do it like a 2255 form, so I got to read you the 2255 form. Do you understand that? Are you willing to hear me out and do it? All right, let's go in there and take care of that, bud. And then we'll get you out of here. As soon as your wife gets here, we'll get you out of here. All right? All right let's go into the into the brief or the since you already said you're going to refuse it, there's no reason to do anything other than that. So um, I understand what you're saying. Just go in there and have a seat real quick so I can put my stuff away. Oh, yeah. Is my key not working now? There we go. Yeah. Do you have a driver's license on your or is it at home? You don't have it on you? Okay. 236 to 224, come in here. It says you're now under arrest for uh, OVI, operating a vehicle under the influence of alcohol and a drug or a drug or a combination of them, operating a vehicle under the influence of a listed controlled substance or a listed metabolite of a controlled substance, operating a vehicle under after underage alcohol consumption or having physical control of a vehicle while under the influence. If you refuse to take any chemical test required by law, your Ohio driving privileges will be suspended immediately and you will have to pay a fee to have the privileges reinstated. If you have a commercial driver's license and refuse to submit to the test or test, you will immediately be placed out of service for 24 hours. You will be disqualified from operating a commercial motor vehicle for a period of not less than one year and you will be required to surrender your, surrender your commercial driver's license to me. If you have a prior conviction of OVI, OVUAC, or operating a vehicle under the influence of a listed controlled substance or a listed metabolite of a controlled substance under state or municipal law with the preceding 20 years, you are now under arrest for state OVI. And if you refuse a test, take a chemical test, you'll face increased penalties if you subsequently are convicted of the state OVI. If you have previously pled guilty or been convicted of two or more OVIs, OVUACs or equivalent offenses in the previous 10 years or plead guilty or been convicted of five or more OVIs, OVUACs or equivalent offenses in the previous 20 years or pled guilty or been convicted of a felony of any of the above violations and you refuse to submit to a chemical test required by law, I am authorized to use whatever reasonable means are necessary to ensure that you submit to a chemical test. Uh, get you out of here, okay? Not going to be any citations issued or anything like that today. We'll just uh, um, get the form filled out, get you a copy of it, and uh, when your wife gets here, we'll get you out, okay? Or you can leave, obviously. So just sit tight. Yeah, just um, hang it out in here with him just to mm -hmm. make sure he's okay if he needs to ask any questions or anything. Check it out, Ms. Cruz. In the end, Byron read Augie his rights and officially arrested him, just like any other citizen would be treated. However, the cops had a soft spot for Augie and hated seeing him in this sorry state.
Yeah, I'm in here. I'm just filling out the 2255 form in here because I got all this information. Yeah, I read it to him. He's refusing. So, um, I'm, if it's okay with you, uh, if it's okay with you, I'm not going to issue a citation right now. I'll write it out later and do what we got to do. Or how do you want that done? No, we'll treat it like a normal, normal okay. uh, OBI. Can you go get me a traffic ticket, please? Um, He's being more cooperative right now, but uh, okay. um, he uh, st we're still up and down. Does he have his gun on? I got his gun away from him, his handgun, and uh, he had a taser on him. I took that away from him. Okay. Um, it's going to be a fight. There was a number of times when I was dealing with him that I thought it was going to go to that out there because he was telling me he was going home. Okay. And I told him he wasn't driving. His wife has been called, she's on her way in. Okay. While filling out the paperwork, Byron was approached by another colleague and was visibly shaken. To talk to him? Well, he's probably gonna do a, order him to do an admin blood draw after you guys are done. He's not gonna do that. Well, you know what that means. Uh, it doesn't matter to be honest with you, so let's not fight over it because he's basically was driving me out there. His behavior was. Oh, really? He didn't come out and say, I'm going to kick your ass or do something, but he's he's going, What are you going to do about it? He starts clenching up. It's a lot. Okay. He's uh, totally insubordinate. Okay. Uh, to the point where I, uh, again, I was calling you, telling yeah. you, basically let you know that we're going to be fighting him. Okay. Yeah, that's kind of what I was getting from you. Yeah, there was no question. Fortunately, I got him to calm down. Yeah. And there's something went on in here, he'll have to tell us later because I told him. Okay. To him. But I, I wouldn't be surprised if we aren't there, if we don't get there yet. Okay. Um, he also came to work today not wearing a vest. Like, dressed and. Right now, he doesn't have his vest. I found that out when I took him in the arsenal to. to um, to get, take his gun stuff from him. I asked him, because he lifted up his shirt, he doesn't have a vest. He came to work today, dressed, ready to go, and patrolled for an hour or so without a vest. Okay. It, it, there's more than enough. We just, we're done. Okay. Very good. What the hell was that? That's his credit card and his key. Where was that? Uh, the key was on the car, the credit card was on the floorboard. You get some better pictures? Yeah. Oh, crap. Do you want them? Zip code. What's the zip code for Troy? Four five three seven three. Operation without being a reasonable withdrawal of the vehicle. What happened at the Troy game last night? What do you mean? I just saw some things on Facebook saying that it wasn't cool or. They grabbed her and sent it to the Oh, okay. There's a major video. Yeah. Yeah, it sounded like a fight, but it sounded like unsportsmanlike stuff for, I don't know. One guy commented on it, and all the Troy people were... Oh, just a Facebook war type of thing? Right. Hey, he made, come on. he made a comment to me that you're going to... you get, Something about, are you going to pay me for this or something like that? I said, what are you talking about? He goes, well, you're going to pay for it eventually. I was like, what does that mean? He, no. he wouldn't answer me. I don't know what that meant. Put all that stuff in a... I got a review. Yeah. Well, no, he's getting paid right now. Is Bruce coming in? Yes. So I'll wait to serve all this when he gets here. It might be better to do it all at once. Yeah. He's not free to leave until Bruce is done. Yeah. During the paperwork, all the precinct officers discussed what led to this arrest. They talked about Augie's threats and whether they should be taken seriously. He didn't have his driver's license on him. Yeah. I wasn't getting a lot of cooperation, so I didn't press it. You know, it wasn't like normal when you arrest somebody and yeah. pat them down. So. 
carry it on my person when I have it at work. I do. Not. I have mine at home. But I have mine inside. Yeah. At all times. Yeah. Justin, here's a. Justin, can you look at me, bud? Please stay here now. Um, apparently, you dropped this Visa card at your uh, bank card. You dropped that there uh, in the cruiser. Uh, Justin, here's the BMB 2255 form for the refusal. And um, since we had so much time, I went ahead and wrote the citation out. The citation is going to be for the OBI refusal and then just reasonable control on private property. Um, what that is. So here's your copy of the 2255 form, and uh, I need you to sign the, uh, the ticket. Bud. I don't now that higher-ups are involved, Augie has to face the full consequences of his action. Alternative plans are being laid out for him if he refuses to comply with sobriety testing. Okay. So, you're required to do it, but of course, it's not like we're going to hold you down and make you. So, my question to you now is uh, what you have to do is uh, sign a form at the ER uh, before the testing that you would release the results of the test to the police department uh, and you would get your own copy as well. Uh, if you refuse to sign that form, then that would be considered insubordination and you'd be subject to disciplinary action. Uh, it's still your option. We, we have to get this straightened out. But in the meantime, we have, remember, we've been talking for a while, but one day we're going to be in an adversarial situation. And right now we are. So I'm not for dying to be really comforting you or giving you advice. And because right now I have to do what I need to do to protect the city and the department. Okay? So, uh, yes, you know, admittedly, you have to make yourself available if we call again anytime during the day and say, Justin, we need you to come down here or something like that. You know, between the hours of, of 8 and 4, you still need to be available. Okay? As the reality of his situation hits, Augie breaks down crying, realizing his life is taking a difficult turn, and he's about to face a bunch of problems. You're still on payroll until we finish this testing, uh, but then as soon as that's all done, then you're on admin leave until further notice. Yeah. I am too. Uh, I was hoping the system, we would never get to this point. Do you want us to try to get an attorney or a union rep? No. Uh, no? Okay. You, you are saying no to an attorney or a union rep right now? Okay. Okay, so then we'll try to get this done as quickly as we can, get you home, and then you need to start working on stuff, my friend. Preston will come read me your guarantee rights and it's one of those special things and then we'll start working on whatever has to be done. I've never been through this at hospital, but whatever needs to be done. It's shocking to see how the police are willing to keep this drunken officer on the payroll, even after totaling a police cruiser bought with the hardworking tax dollars of the public. We are ordered to fully cooperate with the investigating official. Your failure to cooperate will create an objective and subjective fear of termination. You have the following rights and responsibilities during this investigation. You have the right to be informed of the allegations involved. You will be asked questions specifically directed and narrowly related to the performance of your official duties. Statements made during any interviews may be used as evidence of misconduct or as the basis for seeking disciplinary action against you. 
any statements made by you during these interviews cannot be used against you in any subsequent criminal proceeding, nor can the fruits of any of your statements be used against you in any subsequent criminal proceeding. If you so request, a person of your choice may be present to serve as a witness during the interviews. If you refuse to answer questioning related to the performance of your official duties, you'll be subject to dismissal. You understand that? Garage doors, open the unit, please. After being read his rights and informed of the procedure to conclude the investigation, Augie cries until his wife arrives to pick him up. Visiting Judge Thomas Hanna of Kettering sentenced Augustine in municipal court on the physical control charge to a $1,000 fine and 180 days in jail, with $700 and all but three days in jail suspended. Although Tyrant Augie's behavior was inexcusable, this next case will have you in awe at how low these U.S. cops can actually get. Can you please go sit in your car, you have nothing to do his with this. His father, I is understand. A minor. I'm an attorney because he's a minor. I'm. You need to tell me, is he going to be here? I don't need to tell you anything. You I'm going to arrest you in a second if you don't get in your car. In September 20 of 23, a woman in Newport, Rhode Island, cops arrested a woman, Claire Hall, wrongfully, which spirals into a disturbing series of events. The woman turned out to be a lawyer, and you can imagine how she got arrested. Yeah, the key's stuck. Okay. It's are involved right now. Not mine. That's mine. All right, let's, let's, we need to get that off the road. All right, can we get that into the parking lot? Okay, well, we're in the middle of the highway. Yes. So, All right, can you, can you move your car, please? I mean, is your car drivable? Yes. All right, we're going to get it off to the side I of the mean, road, all right? All I'm saying is I can leave. I just want to tell his father. You don't have to leave. Just no, move your car. I just want you to tell me. It's are where? you okay? Yeah, I'm all right, okay. Let's have a seat right over where? here. Is that your mom? No. Paul was trying to be a good citizen and help out the young 17-year-old that she saw got into an accident. This turned on her womanly instincts to want to help out and assist the boy, something the cops didn't appreciate one bit. I'm working. Can you please go sit in your car? You have nothing to do his with this. father. Seat. I he's understand. A minor. I'm an attorney because he's a minor. I'm. You need to tell me. Is he going to be here? I don't need to tell you anything. You, I'm going to arrest you in a second if you don't get in your car. You are kidding. You are impeding an investigation right now, and you're really bothering me. Which go I sit in your father? car. What I will talk I to him in a minute. Father? Get in your car now. Oh, tell him. Take it. No, you do not touch me. Oh my God. Stop. What are you doing? Oh my God. Stop what are you me. Are you kidding? Knock it off. Knock it off! Get your hands off it right now! Get your hands off! Tell him to get his hands yes, off Yes, I do. Tell him to get his hands off me right now. Oh my god! Are you ah. Stop! No, I'm not stopping! The unprofessional and tyrannical officers get far too annoyed with Hall and take action to brutally arrest her. She struggled as other first responding officers joined in, very similar to a gang. <laughs> Recording. Recorded. I'm wearing a body cam. I understand, but why are they under arrest? Because you weren't listening to anything we were saying. Oh my God! You're not listening. These awful tyrants don't seem to care about any of the pre-existing conditions and injuries Hall had as they make it exponentially worse. Simply because she was trying to be a good Samaritan, there could have been a better way to deal with Hall honestly. Everyone in custody, oh disorderly and resisting. <gasps> oh my god, you gotta be kidding me. You gotta be kidding me. Stop. No! Stop talking. No! No! This, this is so ridiculous. I cannot even believe this. Man. Oh my god. Go put her in my car. I just wanted to know, I could tell his father if he's going to the hospital. 
I'm not even involved in this. I can't believe this. That was our point the I whole time. I cannot believe this. That was our point the you whole time. You are not involved. Oh you are not God. involved. I'm a good Samaritan. He instructed you to do something, I'm a good and you Samaritan refused who, to do it. I'm a good Samaritan who stopped to help a kid, yeah. and this Let's is go. what happened. Okay, stop grabbing me. I'll get up on my own. You're hurting me. No. Oh, my God. Stop it. Not only do they wrongfully arrest her, but further stomp on her rights as a citizen, not even afraid that the woman and her spouse are lawyers. The cops try and get a hold of Hall's car. So it's in there somewhere. Our key is probably in the car. Would it start up from like, yeah? All right. If the car is on and running with our push to start, the car is on and running, it will run as long as the key is in a certain distance, right. which this is probably a certain distance. Now you, you Did drive Did you take up. a key off of her? Her? Yeah, when you, when you, okay. I didn't either. Did you put a bottle in the car? Grab her pocketbook and everything? She didn't, she, she was just out of the car. All we have is her cell phone, a shoe, glasses. Her glasses, that's it. The, the key's either on her person, most likely, or the key's in her does pocketbook. Does it say, uh, key not a vehicle? No, because it started right up. Wait, so the key's in the car? Yeah, I just couldn't find it. Oh, okay. You want me to move his Volvo? Hey, yeah. I can't move it. Come on, Bob. I would have moved it. <laughs> Why don't you bring her oh, back? I started before, bro. Why don't you bring her back? Get her out of here. Get her. I'm assuming that she's an attorney. She's got nothing. We'll get her. And she's cut her loose. Right. And then, uh... Go from that. Hey. Yeah, I heard you guys. I heard you guys say one in custody. I'm like, oh, here we go. Officers then discuss the keys with Hall before the body camera recording concludes. Do you have your car key on you? Where in your car is it? Okay. All right, I'll touch your driver now. Little black pouch, she said in her car. Right. That works. You can get her out of here. Right. She calmed down a little bit now. Huh? better than she was. I wonder how she'll be in the block, but somebody will be at the station to help me. Yeah, I'll, I'll head back. Oh, that's right, Jim. We'll have the full price. Claire Hall was charged with resisting arrest and disorderly conduct, entirely made up charges that were leveled against her for unfair reasons. So the countersuit was inevitable, which Hall and her spouse filed together. So that's a wrap on today's cases. We saw an officer reduced to tears just after getting caught. Accountability is so important because it ensures that everyone, even those meant to enforce the law, is held to the same standard. Watching these officers get called out was intense, but it's crucial for maintaining trust in our system. What do you think about how these situations were handled. Let me know in the comments below and take a look at our next video right here.